What's going on guys, I'm the Walrus Jedi and in today's video I will be talking Ahsoka Part 7, Dreams and Madness. There will be spoilers for this uh, episode, so if you haven't watched it, this is your spoiler warning. If you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing for more Ahsoka videos and uh, Star Wars videos in general. Part 7, Dreams and Madness. The episode starts out on Coruscant with uh, Hera in a court, I guess you could say. And you have Chancellor Mothma and a few other senators in that. And they're basically deciding if she should get court-martialed or not. And basically, it's looking like she is until C-3PO comes and basically says that Leia authorized their Hera's mission. And that basically saves Hera from being court-martialed. And, yeah, nice little scene. And then we go to the Pergil in Traveling Through Hyperspace, Ahsoka and Hu Yang basically prep uh, in it. We see Ahsoka training. She's practicing her forms with uh, a hologram of Anakin. Basically, it's a training hologram from back when she was a Padawan. And, you know, we get a name drop of Ventress, Grievous, Dooku. Pretty, it's pretty cool. It's nice little touch that I liked. They arrive at the new galaxy, but something is wrong. As in the previous episode, Thrawn had basically set up a means to uh, fight the Pergil if they would show up. So there are mines littered in space in front of Peridia. So they basically have to dodge the mines and uh, they manage this and they fly into the Pergil graveyard that surrounds Perdia and they evade some, uh, some, some of the fighters from the Eye of Scion, the ring ship, and basically Thrawn, he finds out about Ahsoka's past and all that, and he finds out that her master was Anakin, and I think he knows Anakin because, uh, you know, in, in the books, he he met Anakin. So I, I, I think in this, I think they're adhering to that at least he he's familiar with Anakin, but it's, it's hard to say. He doesn't say much. It's just a look, basically. Yep. So he manages to flush out Ahsoka, and, and he flushes out Ahsoka, and... He sends in some fighters because ah Ahsoka is looking for Sabine. She manages to locate Sabine by connecting with her with the Force. And so Ahsoka heads to where Sabine is. Meanwhile, uh, Sabine and Ezra, they're traveling with the crab rock people, whatever, in their little mobile houses. And they're, they're just talking. Uh, Balin and Shin, they discover them. And Balin basically sends Shin there because Balin has to go on his own path. So Shin uh, goes with the, the thugs that they've joined forces with and she attacks the caravan of crab people with Ezra and Sabine. And basically we, we see... Ezra use the force to fight the um, to fight the thugs and the stormtroopers that Thrawn does send to help. He doesn't take the lightsaber back, even though Sabine is offering it to him. Uh, he says that it's hers now, so that's unfortunate. I would have liked to see Ezra with some lightsaber action, but whatever, I guess his little force, st I don't know, I, I, I guess it looked okay, I don't know, but yeah, uh, meanwhile, Balin 
went and he basically is waiting for Ahsoka to land. So he and Ahsoka fight. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ahsoka manages to distract him because Hugh Yang is flying in with the ship, the shuttle, and he shoots and Ahsoka uses that distraction to get away, to go get to Sabine and Ezra. And, uh, yeah, she gets there and she helps repel the bad guys, but Thrawn recalls the bad guys and basically Thrawn is, uh, he's, he doesn't care what happens to the good guys because he's more concerned with getting his Star Destroyer loaded with his cargo and leaving, going back to the regular galaxy. He doesn't care what happens. As long as the good guys stay on that planet and stay out of his hair, basically. Um, And yeah, Balin, throughout this episode and the last episode, Balin is like, I don't know, like I think something's going to happen with Balin. Like he, he feels something, so... Uh, something might happen with Balin that I think would be very interesting. So, and he's probably, he's been, I think, consistently the most interesting thing about this show. Like he's a cool character. He, he's, he easily outshines pretty much every other character. I mean, Thrawn's really cool and, you know, it was cool to see Anakin again, but Balin, Balin is one of the only reasons why I'm, I'm liking this show at all. So I look forward to that. Oh yeah. And you know, the end of the episode, they, you know, they kind of have a little reunion and then basically, yeah, they'll leave what I liked. Well, from this episode, uh, the Anakin hologram was cool. And the name drops of Ventress and Grievous and Dooku. That was nice. I think that was a nice little, unexpected treasure. Hugh Yang, as always, is is fun. Um, the C-3PO appearance I liked, although I would have thought it would have been cooler had it been actually Leia instead of just C-3PO. I mean, you see C-3PO all over the place, so... so but it was still cool. Balin is awesome. Uh, Thrawn, uh, he's cool. You know, I mean, live action Thrawn, it's, oh, it's, it's not the greatest, but it's okay. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's about it. I think what I didn't like, well, the, uh, the opening scene with on course on that, I don't know. The new Republic just does not interest me. It would have years ago, but. The more I see it, the more I dislike it. And that Senator Ziono is a scumbag. And he could be in league with the Imperials because every time it's brought that, you know, the Imperial remnant is a threat or whatever, he keeps on like, he's so quick and so adamant that there is no such thing as the Imperial Remnant or it's not a threat or whatever, that it is possible that he could be uh, uh, in league. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe he's just a scumbag. I don't know. Not a likable guy. Um, And, you know, he is, he is a tie to Star Wars Resistance, which doesn't help his case any. If you've seen that show, you know, it's, it's garbage. Don't waste your time. So any any tie to that show is not good. Uh, plus, this guy's a scumbag, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, and Ezra using the his for the force to fight. I mean, it could be cool, but and I think it would have looked better in animation when where the I think the force looks better because in live action. I don't know. Sometimes it just looked like he would push and the, the guys that like, it it looked kind of fake at some, I don't know. It didn't look the greatest. Um, yeah. And like I said, I, I really wanted to see Ezra whip out his lightsaber and go to town on him. Like, yeah, like, come on, like Sabine using it. Like she's not 
that competent with it. She's just whacking it around, basically. I want to see someone that, you know, yeah. Because every time Ahsoka duels, except when she was a kid in the flashbacks, it's so slow, and we have to reposition every time. And I don't know. It's not that. It's not the most. I don't know. I like my lightsaber duels, quick and flashy, like the prequels and Clone Wars. So, sorry. That's just the way I like my duels. I like. Well, overall, uh, I think this is a this is a fine episode. I mean, on the Ahsoka scale, it's it's fine. Um, so yeah, like I'd, I'd give it a score of a, a 6.5 out of 10, I guess. Yeah. What'd you think of this episode? Um, yeah. What'd you think of Ezra using the force to, to dispatch the guys instead of the lightsaber? Yeah. Do you like that decision? Is it cool? Yeah. And what do you think of Balin and like what what's going to happen with Balin? I th- I think that's going to be something that uh, could be really interesting and, and could be a standout of the show. Is yeah, well, Balin's already a standout of the show, but yeah. So uh, yeah, you can tell me in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.